Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So today what we're going to do is we're going to use basic area and perimeter formulas to solve problems. Um, how we're going to do this is we're going to use the formulas and we're going to solve for the given variable that we're looking for. Either, you know, the base, the height, or the area, the circumference, or whatever. And we need to review these topics before we move on. So let's go through it now. Uh, let's start with triangles. Triangles, remember, that's the, uh, the area is one half of the base times the height. And if we want to find the perimeter, we just add the three sides together. If you don't know this already, make sure you write this down in your notebooks or whatever. So let's do some let's do some pretty elementary level problems here. Um, a couple things I just want to talk about. When you're dealing with a picture, if you see dotted lines, like you see here, these are not part of the triangle, right? The triangle is the is the the black part that is a triangle if you see red dotted lines you are specifically being given a height that height may or may not be within the triangle but it is something that you need to make sure you recognize what it is um the other thing that you must keep in mind when you are doing these problems is that the base and the height are always at right angles to each other Every single time, no matter what, always and forever, amen. So if you look here, the 5.8 side here, they extend with the red dotted line just to show where it should be going. And they make a right angle to this altitude that they drop from the corner up here, straight down. So they give you that this is the height and that this is the base. So here we're trying to find the area. So we do area equals one half base times height. Well, what did I say the base was? It was 5.8. What did I say the height was? It was 4.4. And so we're just going to do one half times 5.8 times 4.4. And remember, when you multiply something by one half, it's the same thing as dividing by two. And you can take this one half and divide it into whichever one of these you want, as long as you only do it once, right? So you can flip things around and do whatever's easiest if you're doing it in your head or if you're going to do it out on a calculator, that's fine too. But either way, you gotta you got to remember, you're doing half of one of these, and then you multiply them together. So... Let's do that. We're just doing half of one of these and then multiplying these together. I, I like I like it when it's an easy thing to try and divide. You see this 4.4? That's really easy to divide by 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm going to use up this 1 half to divide this 4.4 and make it, oh, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then I can just take these two numbers and multiply them together. 5.8 times... 2.2, and I'm going to do some multiplication. 8 times 2 is 16. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And then I do the tens place, so I put a 0 down. 8 times 2 is 16. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. I'm going to add all this together. 6. 7, 2, 1, and then I count the number of decimal places, right? There's 1, there's 2, so I put the decimal place 1, 2. So my final answer here, my area of this triangle is 12.76, and that's my final answer. So I'm going to put two minutes up. Y'all are going to have a chance to do this yourself. Find the base, find the height, use the area formula of a triangle. So if we look, 
the red dotted line here is the height. That's 7.3. The base is down here perpendicular to the height at 12. So we're going to do one half base times height, half of 12 times 7.3. Um, and again, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, do a problem like this, don't be afraid to take half of the easier one to take, right? You look here, which of these is going to be easier to take, 7.3 or 12? I think it's the 12, right? So what's half of 12 is 6, right? So we're going to do 6 times 7.3. And again, when you're multiplying, always put the bottom number as the one that has less numerals in it, less work for you. Six times three is 18. Six times seven is 42 plus one is 43. And then I look at count, I've got one decimal place. So I'm gonna 43.8 and that is my area. The area equals 43.8 what inches right i don't think i labeled it last time inches and it and, and and focusing on the units is very important because here's the thing when we do a problem like this notice are the units the same anymore no this is meters this is centimeters um when it comes to your math excel they are going to have an answer blank and that answer blank is going to predetermine the units you're going to end up using and i'm not saying um that there's necessary necessarily one unit that's better to use than the rest when it comes to me when you are physically handing me work for me to grade with my hands and you make an executive decision to have the answer be in centimeters versus meters or vice versa. I don't care. The answer is correct as long as you do the work correctly, right? It doesn't matter what units they're in as long as A, you label what the units are and B, you do the right work. Um, but when you are doing work for the robot, the robot is going to tell you what units to use. It's going to insist that you use those units, and it will mark you wrong if you choose to enter in meters versus centimeters or vice versa if they said one way and you did the other, right? So here, regardless, we just have to make sure to change our units. I always, me personally, when I have the choice, will make the decision that doesn't involve me working with decimals if I have the opportunity to. Now, that's not always going to be something that you have the opportunity to do, and that's okay. But it, it's really, in the end, up to you. So you could do, well, I you could say, well, I want this to be in centimeters, and so I'm going to take... 9.4 meters, and I'm going to multiply that by 100. Centi means 100, right? Going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, you multiply, because there are more of them now, right? You cut them into pieces, and now there's more units to work with. This is 940 centimeters. And so now what I can do is I can, I can find the answer in centimeters. I can say 940 centimeters times, and I've got to divide by two, right? Because it's one half base times height. And I'll take half of 400. Now, in going through, like if you've got a bunch of leading zeros, you see how the, you've got all these trailing zeros at the end? Uh, I don't know if you've ever been taught this, but if there's like just zeros on the end, you can kind of ignore them to do your multiplication. 
So I can, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three zeros and I'm going to scooch them off to the side. And the, the calculation I'm going to do is I'm going to do 94 times 2. And I'm going to say, all right, well, I've got these three zeros down here. I'll just put them back down at the end. If no one has taught you that, congratulations. Now you've learned. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 9 is 18. And so in centimeters squared, and these are squared units, what am I doing? I'm not putting squared units because it's a area is two dimensional, right? Area is two dimensional. And so since area is two dimensional, the units are dimensional. Length is a one dimensional unit. Area is a two dimensional unit. Um, volume is a three dimensional unit. But so we go through, and I can either talk about this in terms of centimeters squared, or if you prefer, you can leave this one, because some people are going to be like, but that's a, that, look at how big that number is, man. I don't want that. I want this in meters, so that meters squared, so that I have less work to do. Smaller numbers, right? And so you're going to say, well, this 400 centimeters in meters is just four meters. Like I said, it doesn't matter which way you go. Your answers are going to be equivalent because you're going to go through and you're going to say 9.4 meters times four meters, one half base times height. I'm still going to do this one because that's the easier number. I'm going to say half of four. So I'm going to do 9.4. Times two to get my answer. Kind of like what I was doing here, right? Multiply. Four times two is eight. Nine times two is 18. Count the number of decimal places. There's just one. And so you can say 18.8 meters squared. <laughs> now, some of you may be asking, well, okay, but how do I go from one to the other? I thought centimeters was 100 times meters. Why is this so many more? Well, remember, these are square units. So if from centimeters to meters is times 100, from centimeters squared to meters squared, or vice versa, is 100 squared. So 10,000? Notice that's four decimal places away, right? So if I wanted to, if I if I did it in centimeters, I was like, oh no, I need it in meters squared. I can just divide by a hundred twice instead of just once. And so I go drop two, drop two more. Now I'm in meters squared from centimeters squared, right? So that that's a little bit, that's a lot of information here. A lot of this stuff you should have learned in middle school at some point. But I know, like speaking even for myself, that didn't stick very well. So I just wanted to do a little refresh on that. So in terms of doing this, my recommendation to you when you're working for the robot is look at the answer and say, okay, well, they want it in centimeters. Let me do the calculation in centimeters. They want it in meters squared. Well, then let me do the calculation in meters squared. It will save you time. It will save you heartache. If you look at the answer, see what they want first, and then do it because it will make all the difference. Because it, it won't look at your answer and go, oh, well, they they must have forgotten what unit they were supposed to be in. That's OK. No, the robot will look at that and go, beep, boop. This is not the answer in my, in my database. So this is wrong. It doesn't look at your intentions. So make sure that you're following what you need to do in advance so that you get it right, OK? Give this one a try. See if you can do it. Notice, notice that 
the answer is not told to you. So you can pick any unit you want as long as you're consistent. Okay. So let's first notice that this triangle is sort of on its side, right? If it helps you to do so, don't be afraid to take your problem and make it look like you want it to, right? All I did here is I put it so that it was standing up. So look, here's your base, 144 inches. Here's your height, 9.1 feet. That's an H. B and H look a little too similar. Um, so going forward here, one half base times height. And this is really driving me bonkers. I'm going to put it back. But you get the idea. Going, uh, going forward, we want to make sure that our... Um, Units are consistent. It really doesn't matter which one you do where. I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna notice, hey, 144 is a multiple of 12. To go from inches to feet, I can divide by 12. Well, what's 144 divided by 12? Let's do that. Doesn't go into one. 12 into 14, that goes once. 12 into 24 goes twice, exactly twice, remainder of zero. So the number of feet that the base is is 12 feet. And you can do that, or you could turn the height into inches. It doesn't matter which. Um, it's up to you. So now that we've figured that out, let's find our area so we've got the area like i said here is one half base times height well what's the base it's 12. what's the height it's 9.1 well obviously if we're going to take half of one of these it's going to be the one that's the even whole number right half of 12 is just six and then when we do our multiplication Six times one is six. Six times nine is 54. And then there's one decimal place all told. So we put one decimal place here. And our final answer is in feet. So feet squared is our area. Yeah, and that's, and that's about it. All right, if we wanna find the area, um, either they're going to give it to you straight and you're just going to have baby town frolics because it's a, it's like a, a problem you would have gotten in fourth or fifth grade. Uh, maybe they change up the units on you. You have to fix the units and then it's baby town frolics because you just half times number times number. And then the other type of problem is they give you the area and then they say, all right, now find the missing piece. So like this, look, they give you the area and they give you the base here and you just want to find the height. So the way we're going to do this, I always write down the equation first. That way I know what's going to go where and I'm going to identify, hey, this is up my base and uh, this is my height. And then this is my area. So look at what we got. We got 48.4 equals one half times the base times the height. Now I really don't have much of a choice. I'm gonna do half of this 11.8. Divide that by two, 11.8 divided by a two. I'm gonna put the decimal place right up there already so I know where to go. Doesn't go into one, but it does go into 11 five times with the remainder of one. 
drop down that eight. Two goes into 18 a nine times. And so what we have here is 48.4 equals 5.9 times the height. Now, this is not going to divide well. In situations where things don't divide very well, we have our good friend Mr. Calculator or Mrs. Calculator. You know, it's it's up to you. Uh, 48.4, and we're going to divide over the 5.9. And we get a number like that. That's a terrible number that we didn't want to have to deal with, right? So this right here, this this number is our answer. And I'll, I'll indicate to you to look up here. It says round your answer to the nearest tenth. And, and when you're doing this on paper, like I'm thinking about, you know, you're showing me your work. From here, there's not much to do. This is the way I would do it. I would divide both sides by 5.9 like this just to show me what's going on. And then I could say H equals, and I would always write out the whole thing. At least a couple more decimal places than what you need. I'm just going to copy down the entire uh, decimal that the, the calculator shows. And then I'm going to notice round your answer to the nearest tenth. And what I do for showing my rounding, I always do this. I put the little squiggly line right after the tenths place. That first decimal place right here is the tenths, right? And then from there, I look at this number and I say, hey, is this number five or above? It is not five or above, so I'm not going to raise this up to 8.3. I'm just going to cross that out. Truncate is the, is the vocab word. I'm going to truncate the decimal here. Say that is 8.2. And 8.2 what? 8.2 years? 8.2 sheep? No, 8.2 centimeters. Remember, we're talking about a distance, right? We're talking about what's the length of this height from corner to side along this dotted line. That is a length. That is a one-dimensional unit. That is a one-dimensional uh, quantity. So we put down a one-dimensional unit. H equals 8.2 centimeters. Give this one a try on your own. It's the same idea. In fact, down to the down to the exact same thing. So go ahead, find the height, just like I did, and get your answer. All right, and again. So my area is going to be one half times the base times the height. I'm going to say. I say stop timer. Thank you. Good. Better. I'm going to say, well, my base is 4.6. My height, I don't know. My area is 6.9. And this is all in feet, so I know I'm just cool to put feet for my answer when I'm done. So my area is 6.9. My height, uh, my my base is 4.6 and my height is I don't know so I'm going to put just put h so I'm going to do this I'm going to what's half of 4.6 half of 4 is 2 half of 6 is 3 and I think that actually does come out nice and even which is really cool That's that's nice. That's actually really neat. These aren't always going to come out even just because they like their decimals here. But if I notice, if I take 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, my height is exactly 3 feet. Yeah? All right. So that's it for triangles. Triangles, I feel like, are the hardest ones to work with. 
Um, so triangles are the ones probably you're going to want to focus on in the in the homework. Make sure that you're good with them. Um, rectangles are much easier. Area, once again, it doesn't have the half now, so it's just the regular, just the base times the height. Perimeter, you're just going to take the four sides, add them together. And so we're going to do this real quick and real easy. First thing you can always note about a rectangle is that the opposite sides are the same. So the area, remember, is base times height. Well, here's the base. Here's the height. 10 times 10, that's 100. That's a two-dimensional measurement, so it's a two-dimensional unit, 100 centimeters squared. And then for perimeter, we just add around. There's 10, 10, 10, and 10. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, right? And perimeter is a distance, so it's a one-dimensional unit. So we put a one-dimensional right here. Okay. Here's another one. Give this one a try yourself. Make sure that you are capable. Let's go over this. So once again, take a minute and label the other sides just so that you have them. Seven miles, this opposite side here, going to be 3.1 miles. And then we're just going to do our area and our perimeter. Area, remember, is base times height. Here's our base. Here's our height. So we're going to do 7 and 3.1. I always put the one with more digits on top because it's easier for me. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. There's one decimal place here, 21.7. And my units, area is a two-dimensional unit, so I'm going to put a mile squared. And then perimeter, we're just going to add them all up. 7, 3.1, 7, 3.1. And you can sort of organize it however you like. So we got 7 and 7 and 3.1 and 3.1, 0 0.2, 3, 10, 3, 10, 20, 0 0.2. And then again, distance is a one-dimensional measurement, so we put down a one-dimensional unit, miles. So perimeter is 20.2 miles. Area is 21.7 miles squared. So once again, we might be forced to take something like this and have different units in here, right? So I'm thinking here, you take this 27, that's in feet, and you want to get yards. So I'm going to divide this by 3 to get it into yards, right? There are three feet in a yard. 27 divided by three is nine. And now I've got yards and yards, I can find the area in the perimeter. So we've got, now that we've done this, it's the same thing from before. So I'm gonna go through, I'm going to find the area is just base times height. Here's the base. Here's the height. Again, I always put the first one, the one that has the bigger number of, yeah. So I want to have the one that's bigger in terms of the number of uh, digits down here. So um, do you want me to start over? Let, let me just real quick start over so first thing this was in feet to begin with right we don't want things in different units because then it's not fun to calculate right 
So we're going to look at this and we're going to say, well, we want them both in feet or we want them both in yards. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm thinking maybe it's easier to divide by this one by three than to multiply this one by three. But your mileage may vary. You may prefer the other way. But I'm going to take this. I'm going to divide it by three so that I get them both in yards. 27 divided by three is nine. And then I've got, I transfer all the other information over to this rectangle. Nine yards, nine yards. 8.7 yards, opposite, better be the same. And remember area, base times height. Well, here's the base, 8.7. Here's the height, 9. And then I'm just going to multiply. 9 times 7, 63. Carry the 6 up there. 9 times 8, 72. Plus that 6 is 78. And then there's one decimal place. So that is my answer. And it is in yards squared, right? Again, area is a two-dimensional measurement. So we have to have a two-dimensional unit to go with it. And then perimeter. We just add up all the sides. 9, 9, 8.7, 8.7. So we're just going to add all those together. This is 18. That is 17.4. Just adding stuff together. 8 and 7 is 15. 35.4 for our final answer. And that is in, again, single yards because we're talking about perimeter. We are going to do one more of these. Um, so once again, you look and you see that they're not in the same units. Millimeters, that's a thousandth of a meter. Centimeters, that's one hundredth of a meter. So if I want to get this into centimeters, I divide this by 10. If I want to get this into millimeters, I can multiply this by 10. It doesn't matter which way we go. Um, sure, let's multiply this one by 10 to get millimeters times 10, that means you just move the decimal place over one. And we get, here's our base, here's our height, and 70 times 88, What am I doing? I'm being silly. Is that this zero here, we can just sort of hang off to the side and really just in our heads do 88 times seven and then put a zero down, right? Seven times eight is 56. Seven times eight is 50. 6, carry the 5, 61, right? And then we have in millimeters squared. And perimeter. Again, we just take these off to the side. This is 70, this is 88, and we just add, right? Eight and eight is, and these are zero, so eight and eight and zero, zero is 16. 16 and 14 is 30 plus one get 316 millimeters for our perimeter. All right.
same idea as before. We're going to ask about a missing side. Um, and again, basically, if you want to find the missing side, you just take the area divided by the side that's missing, and there's the side that's remaining, right? So, you know, however you want to do this, you you can basically with the with the rectangles especially you can basically cut straight to the chase. Thirty one point eight divided by three. What is that? Well, three goes into three once. Bring down the one. Three does not go into one. So now we're going to bring down the eight. Put the decimal point there. Three does go into 18 six times. And so we get our final answer here of 10.6 what? 10.6 kilometers. All right, once again, take a minute or so, do this. All right. So we're going to look at this and we're going to go, okay, once again, let's cut straight to the chase. The area divided by the side equals the other side. And we're in inches, so keep that in mind. 47.6 divided by 6.9. Ain't nobody got time for that one. Bring out big papa calculator here. 47.6 divided by 6.9. Again, that comes out to this unfathomable decimal. So for you, I mean, you, I don't care exactly how you do it. Just write something down. You can either be like, you can literally, I, I'm okay with you literally going, hey, 47.6 divided by 6.9 equals 6.89855. Five zero seven two five you've shown all the work that you need to show because that's all the work that there was right like there's not there's not a ton of stuff that you actually had to do here and this is in inches and then you're going to say well i got to follow directions so i'm going to round my answer to the nearest tenth nearest tenth that is that first decimal place so i need to look at that one and say is that five or bigger Yes, it is. So this nine rounds that up to a, what's bigger than eight? Nine. All right. Cool. All right, the last thing to do is circles. So what I have for you here is a little cheat sheet. Area is pi times the square of the radius. So you find what the radius is, you square it, you slap a pi on. The perimeter, you find the diameter, you slap a pi on it. And if you want to find uh, the radius or the diameter from each other, two radiuses, two radii make a diameter. Now, when you turn things into me, I want them to be exact answers. That means I don't want you to do what you did in elementary school and middle school and use 3.14 for pi. If you are specifically asked to round, follow the directions that they give you. If they don't tell you a value for pi, but they tell you to round, make sure you're using a nice, big, long pi value. My calculator goes up to there, 3.14159265.4. If you use 3.14159265.4, you will be fine in terms of rounding. Rounding error is a real thing here, folks. If you use 3.14 and they're asking you to round to like the nearest thousandth or something like that, you're going to have an answer that is wrong, dead wrong, even if you feel like you did everything right. 
So when you hand things to me, like if your answer was like, let's say, here, I'll show you. Let's just go. So you've got, here's your radius. And I want to find the area. I'm not even going to turn pi into a number. I'm just going to leave it as pi. Well, what's 10.1 squared? What's 10.1 times 10.1? Much better if I'm literally just going to leave it as this number. 102.01, which is what 10 square 10.1 squared is, pi and then kilometers squared. This pi is just gonna stay here. I want, I'm giving an exact answer. I understand that the actual physical value of the area, like you're going through, how much paper do I need to cover up that circle is more like 318 something kilometers squared, but I don't care about that. I want to give an exact perfect answer. And this answer is perfectly exact. It is not an approximation. It is not rounded. This is the answer I want on paper from you when you hand things into me, unless I specifically tell you to round and I rarely will. But when you are giving the answer to the robot, Read directions. If it says in terms of pi, then it's asking for the same thing that I like, in terms of pi. If it says to round, you will put that in your calculator, 102.01 times pi, and you will generate a big, ugly, nasty decimal and round however it needs to be rounded. Same thing here, the circumference, the perimeter of a circle. The circumference is just a fancy name for the perimeter of a circle. Again, pi times the diameter. Well, you're given the radius, but I don't want the radius. I want the diameter of the whole thing, which is two times bigger, right? The radius is 10.1. The diameter, which is what I want for the circumference, is 20.2. And I'm just going to take that, slap a pi on it, and call it a day. So here's my perimeter. Again, perimeter is a distance. That's a one-dimensional unit. 20.2 pi kilometers. And my area is 102.01 pi kilometers squared. Let's buzz through these. I'm going to do the same thing. Again, here's my radius right here, 5.9 yards. So let's in advance, get that diameter. Two times 5.9, 11.8, yeah? So now I've got everything I need. Let's do area first. Square R and put a pi on it. And once again, that's not a, a number I want to do in my head. I don't want to take 5.9 times 5.9. So I'm going to do that here on the calculator, I get 34.81. And I'm in yards, so yards squared. And then perimeter, we said is pi times the diameter. What's my diameter? It's just 11.8. And then put a pi on it. Don't don't get don't get freaked out by these. These are the easiest ones. For area, find the radius, square it, put a pi on. For perimeter, find the diameter, 
Put a pie on it. Don't think too hard. All right, let's go the other way now. So now I want to find the area in circumference with a diameter instead of a radius. So let's, this is the diameter. That means the radius is 3.4. Okay, now I have the exact same thing, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Well, what's 3.4 of the quantity squared, huh? Eleven point fifty six. Pi feet squared. Now what's the circumference? Pi D. Well, D is just six point eight. Pi feet. Again. Circumference is a, 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 a one-dimensional unit. Area is a two-dimensional unit. That's all this is. Don't try and overthink this. This is meant to be easy, right? Here's another one. Same exact thing. Here, my diameter is 12 inches. So what's my radius? It's just six. So now, hey, same problem. This is even easier because what's six squared is 36. And then the units are inches squared. What's my circumference? Well, what's D? D is 12. The units are inches. Ta-da, not difficult. And then even these, what I'm about to show you, not difficult. Here I'm giving you the circumference. And I want to find the radius. So let me, I've got 12.6. You could literally, well, let's find the diameter. Just divide the pi over, right? Twelve point six over pi. That's the diameter. Now that's that's gonna be super duper um, unsatisfying. So what we will do is this. We'll we'll, we'll divided by pi, I'm going to get that big ugly number, uh, if y'all can see right here, I'm going to just put it off screen so I can write it down, 4.0107.04566, and that's uh, centimeters. And they, that's the diameter, but we want the radius, so we're just going to divide that by 2. Two centimeters now of course they're going to tell you to round it um if you are not told for me and you like i you know what I'll, I'll be honest i'm never going to give you these directions like this i'll definitely tell you hey round to the nearest four decimal places so i'll i'll say hey nearest four decimal places that's here right one, two, three, four, nearest ten thousandth, if you prefer. And so now we look, is that a five or above? Yes, it is. So this gets rounded up to a four. Centimeters. 
So if you were to round, you would do it like that. I'm going to do a couple more of these, but they're all the same, basically. Here's the circumference. I want to find the radius. So I'm going to start off by doing pi d. I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Whatever that is. 69.1 divided by pi. So you get 21. Of course, it's easier for me to just put this over here. Point nine nine five two one three one four. Uh, kilometers. That's a really big circle. 22 miles across. And then we want to find the radius now. So we're going to divide that by 2. 10.99. Now. Oh. Is that right? No, that's, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do this the lazy way because I don't want to have to do this in my head. Oh, I was right so far. Nine nine seven six zero six five seven. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, and this is kilometers again. So. For ones like this, if they say find the radius and they give you the circumference, divide by pi in your calculator, and then divide by 2 to get the radius, because this will give you the diameter, but we want the radius. Alrighty, two more. Do to do. Now we're given the area. So we're going to do the same idea. We're going to first divide by pi, and then this time we're going to square root. See, because it's r squared, so we've got to square root it. So let me show you what that looks like. Divide by pi. Whatever that is, 50 point. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that. Typed in the wrong window. 50.3 divided by pi. That gives us 16 something. You know, this many right here, 16.0109872828. I'm going to write it down, 16.0109872828. And it does keep going. And then we're going to square root both sides. So this is r squared, but we want r, right? So I'm going to, and there's a really cool way to do it in your calculator. You can hit square root, and then there's a little answer button, second minus here for me. See, so square root a and s. Kind of looks like the, the logo for the uh, for a pair of Vans shoes. But this is what we get. This 4.001 number. That's the number that we that we get. I'm going to write it down. So we square root both sides. And for those of you who remember from algebra one, the plus or minus, here we are in a situation where that minus answer doesn't make sense. So we don't have to worry about that right now. We just want the principal root. And then this is, this is our answer in gross form. And if we round to the nearest four decimal places, 
one, two, three, four. We look at the next number. That's a seven. Seven is five or above. So this three is going to be rounded up to the next number. All right. 